So uh, we've, we've figured out a batch uh, reactor design equation. Um, let's go ahead and run with that. And then we'll preview um, and go over other ideal reactor types. So let's do um, an example problem. I don't like to go for, for too long without discussing example problems. So here's our example problem. Um, we just have uh, A goes to B. And, and by the way, we're, we're using um, you know, simple letters uh, to represent our chemical species rather than uh, real um, substances just because you know, it's a lot faster to write just A goes to B. And if the kinetics are first order, and um, you know the stoichiometric coefficients are one to one, then it doesn't really matter what A and B are. Um, so let's say that um, the um, there is a, a general rate um, in this case um, uh, a, a a species independent uh, rate um, that is uh, KCA. Um, in other words, um, this is an elementary reaction where um, the species dependent rate of formation uh, or the rate of formation of species A is going to be happening at uh, minus KCA. Uh, let's make a couple of other um, statements about this um, problem. Um, we're, so it's uh, first order uh, irreversible, and we've kind of already shown that um, just with the use of the single arrow. Um, and uh, me saying that it was an elementary reaction. Um, it's a, it's going to be in a batch reactor, okay? Um, it's a liquid phase. So we're talking about liquids. Um, and uh, so, we, you know, we can um, assume constant volume. Um, because a liquid is an incompressible fluid. Um, okay, and so what we want to figure out um, are uh, what are, uh, let me, yeah, uh, what are CA and CB as a function of time? Um, and, you know, some of you who uh, maybe took uh, AP or IB chemistry in high school will we'll, we'll still see this as something that's review material, and that's fine. Um, you know, the common assumption when we're not really thinking about um, a chemical engineering process is that some reaction is just occurring in batch. So if this looks like something that you've seen before, it's no coincidence, um, and we'll just work through it relatively quickly. Um, so we're going to go back to our, our design equation. So batch um, design equation, or DE. And let me just mark here that this is our solution to this problem. Um, we're going to have DCI DT equals RI. Uh, and that's what we can use at constant volume. Um, we know that RA is minus KCA. Um, again, the, just so I have it on this slide uh, or on this page, uh, A goes to B. Um, so let's go ahead and also write what the, that species dependent uh, rate of formation for B is. Um, can you take a moment to try to guess, you know, what, what is this? Um, I won't spend too much time. I think you might already know. Um, it's uh, the, the species being formed, and uh, due to the stoichiometry, it's just happening at the, um, the same uh, rate, but opposite sign. Um, OK, so if we were then to plug in our, our terms for A or for B, um, for species A, we can say that um, DCA DT equals minus KCA. And if we wanted to look at this for species B, um, we can say that DCB DT equals KCA. Mm, so if we're looking just at these equations right now, we've got a pretty convenient differential equation um, here for species A because we've got CA on both the left and right hand sides. But in the case of species B, 
we've got um, a DCV term and we've got a CA on the right. So we'll know we'll have to do something uh, to deal with that. Um, let's go ahead and just work with species A since we can. Um, so if we're just um, doing our usual differential equations approach and maybe it's been a while, so just to refresh, we're gonna, we're gonna separate variables, um, try to move our CA terms together. So we're gonna swing that CA back over to the denominator on the left-hand side, and we're gonna have minus K DT. Um, and we can integrate this. Um, you can go ahead and integrate um, with bounds of CA naught, our initial concentration of CA, uh, which we weren't told, but we can represent the variable um, because everything's gonna depend on how much we started with um, in this batch reactor in order to know what the concentration is as a function of time. Um, so if you have a problem, a statement like that, you know, you can, um, uh, oops, I changed color accidentally. Um, you can just um, uh, assign this kind of a term. Um, okay, so we still have our, our DCA a over CA. Um, we're gonna integrate from um, zero to T uh, minus K DT. Okay, um, right, and I'll just rewrite more explicitly um, where we're saying that uh, this is, I guess, a, a initial condition, CA equals CA naught at time equals zero. Okay, so if we, um, if we go with this a little bit further, we're gonna have an LN, our natural log of CA, um, and then CA, um, and that's a function of, of T. I guess I can write that. And then we have CA naught, um, and that all equals um, minus KT evaluated from uh, tier zero to T. Um, so this is a good step to show just to make sure that you're um, using your both of your boundary conditions. Um, let me go ahead and um, I'm gonna move to the next page, so just make sure you've got all of that. Okay, um, so now when we move, when we rearrange things a little bit, this gives us the natural log of um, CA, this function of T over CA naught um, equals KT. And uh, we can rearrange, uh, we can basically, um, you know, um, uh, take E to the, raise both sides uh, to, to the E, that's not quite the right way to say it, but you know what I mean. Um, and then we, um, we get our uh, CA uh, equals CA naught um, E to the minus KT. And this is our um, solution for um, CA. Now, just to quickly um, talk about how we can deal with CB to wrap up this clip. Um, we have a couple of options. So let's, um, let's talk about uh, two options. There might even be more um, for solving the CB equation. Okay, so one is um, we could go ahead and try to substitute, substitute, CA with, uh, oh, well, maybe I should say where. Um, we can substitute CA in, but we're going back to this DCBDT equals KCA. So we can try to substitute this CA um, with the solved um, CA term as a function of T and then integrate. If you kind of picture what might happen here, um, so if we make this substitution, so we have um, uh, CA solved uh, in terms of CA naught and then as a, just a function of time. So if we basically introduce this in for CA, we end up with K, CA naught, E, and we have our only variable on the right hand side is T and we have a DT term here. So um, that does help us, That's, that, that definitely allows us um, to basically uh, solve um, for CB. Um, another option that we can use, um, so or can uh, use 
stoichiometric table So I'm not necessarily going to write out the stoichiometric table here, but I just want to point out that um, if you're doing a, a sort of mole balance uh, on this system, um, what you'll see is that um, basically the number of moles of A plus B have to be the same. And, and uh, uh, the, sorry, the total number of moles of A plus B, the sum of moles. So, um, anyway, sum of moles of A plus B is constant with this particular stoichiometry. Um, so what does that tell us? Well, that means um, whatever we had at uh, time zero, so our initial condition of CA naught plus CB naught is going to be equal to whatever our concentration of A plus concentration of B um, would be at any given time. So this is um, uh, simpler in this case because um, if we just do a little bit of rearrangement here, um, we get, uh, so let's just write CA naught minus CA plus CB naught equals CB. Okay, so now we've, so, now we've arranged things so that it's CB in terms of all of our other concentrations. Um, and that would just then, um, you know, we already, this is a constant, this is a constant, and we already solved for this. Um, so if I just, uh, you introduce those terms, um, if I were to write, okay, CA naught, and then what was our solution for CA? It was CA naught, um, E to the minus KT, and then CB naught, uh, or, you know, we could rearrange this. Uh, just grouping terms that have CA naught and have one minus E to the minus KT um, plus CB naught. And now we, that, this way we didn't have to integrate anything. Um, so that was potentially an easier solution. This is exactly the same solution that you'd get um, if you used, um, uh, if you used option one here. Um, if you were to do this integral, you would, you would end up with the same thing. So, um, you can't necessarily go wrong, but this is the easier way to do it. And that, um, you know, just kind of quickly shows you um, how we might use a design equation um, for a given reactor type.